whoa. It's a, it's a truly humbling experience to actually be here, and it's a, it's a huge privilege to be here also. Um, it's been a long journey coming here. Uh, it's, there's, there's this kind of myth that um, money speaks, and it's, it's kind of ironic that before I actually give up money, um, I'd have four people in an audience, and so actually just from, from giving up money, I've actually got a bigger audience than ever, so I think that blows the myth of um, the money speaks. I think, um, I think my, thank you. <laughs> I think uh, my moneyless journey actually began um, weirdly and ironically as a budding, a, a budding economist. Um, and that sounds ironic to most people because uh, we think of economy as money, but actually money, the monetary economy is just but one example of an economy. And what, what economy is really about is ways of meeting our needs. And so I'm trying to show the world that there's another way of meeting our needs apart from actually using money. But then um, just as a, in my last year of my economics degree, um, I came across a guy called Gandhi, who com his message completely scuppered my plans for world domination and, um, and wealth accumulation. And uh, you've no idea how much I hate Gandhi now. He, he, he ruined my life. I could have had a great, great life, you know, at, like the, the hotel I stayed in this, in this weekend. And, uh, and yeah, so instead of going on to Wall Street and making lots of cash, um, I decided to start to raise awareness about the destructive and inevitable consequences of, of this tool we call money. Um, and so I set up a, an alternative economy back in 2007 called Free Economy, which is now in over 150 countries around the world with very active groups. And its members do things on what we call a paid for basis. So instead of instead of always getting something in exchange, we do something and we say, just pay the favor forward. Um, and that's a, that's a huge difference in, 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 in way of thinking. Um, so, yeah, so from, the, the, I, I guess the question you're all asking is, why on earth would you give up money? Why you take such an extreme action? And money is a fantastic tool. You know, it has enabled the economies of scale and the division of labor that has facilitated the entire civilization we see before us today. But what is grossly misunderstood is that this tool has got inevitable consequences um, that, that gets little or absolutely no attention in the mainstream media. And, and I guess that's what I'm trying to bring to the world. Um, so people, yeah, people always ask me the question, why do you live without money? And, and today there's an infinite number of reasons why I live without money. It's not just one anymore. But I'll, I'll kind of outline three today. The first one was uh, an initial realization that a lot of the social and ecological issues we're faced with today, such as ecological destruction, the masking of the ocean, sweatshops, factory farms, deforestation, all these things that we pay lip service to actually caring about. Um, th th these things stem from our delusion that we're, we are separate from nature. We're not separate from nature. And it also stems from the fact that we're very, very disconnected from what we consume. So because of the, the widening degrees of separation between the consumer and the consumed, we no longer have any real appreciation for the embodied energy, the embodied destruction, the embodied suffering that goes in to every stage of the supply chain in the things we buy. We never get to see these people. The tool that, that enabled this disconnection um, is money, especially in the global format that we see it today. So, I'll give you some examples. If we all had to grow our own food, we wouldn't waste a third of it as we do in the UK right now. If we had to make our own tables and chairs, we wouldn't chuck them out the moment we decided to change the interior of the decor. If we, had to, if we had to take responsibility for our own drinking water, I doubt most of us would pee and poo in it. Um, it wouldn't make much sense to pee and poo in your own drinking, in, in your own drinking water. Um, and so until we, until we reconnect with what we consume, and what I'm talking about is a completely localized economy, until we reconnect with what we consume, all these symptoms, all these social and ecological symptoms will continue because we're not getting to the root of the problem, which is our separation from nature and our separation from what we consume. We need to localize. I think the second point, um, why, I, second major point why I live around money, because I, I believe that money Money has now become to replace community as a primary source of security. Um, so over, you know, over the last 13,000 years, 
Um, we've had a kind of a, a, a gradual erosion of community. I've witnessed this in Ireland over the last 15 years in the, in the Celtic Tiger economy. And pre-agriculture and the ascent of money, humanity, humanity had a security in the earth and in the relationships with people around them. And, but but since, since agricultural revolution and since the ascent of money, when humanity has been striving for independence, it no longer sees itself as in, interdependent, it's striving for independence. And let me tell you something today, independence is a complete myth. It doesn't exist. At the very, very basic level, we're dependent on earthworms, we're dependent on bees that pollinate our food. We are not independent, and we've got to get away from this illusion of independence. Um, that's, that's a very, very important point for me. Um, and so, yeah, the, 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 the third main reason why I personally live without money, and this is going to sound quite harsh, but I believe that prostitution is to sex what buying and selling is to giving and receiving. And so, thank you. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not calling uh, everybody in the audience a prostitute because they went into the office last week for, for eight hours. Um, but actually, in some ways, I guess I also am. Like, we do so many things that we do today, we don't even believe in them anymore. Yet we do them for what is inherently valueless notes and coins that reduces all, all, all life to numbers. Like, what kind of life is that that we reduce all life to numbers? And if you think of the act, if, if you think of the difference between making love, and I'm not just talking about having sex, I'm talking about actually really making love and, and having sex with a prostitute, you can... You can sense the difference of the spirit in the act. You can sense the, the lack of connection or the, the increase of connection, how it actually feels as a human being. And that happens every day on a, you know, when we go to a shop and we don't even know the name of the cashier. We have these very, very impersonal relationships. And what I'm trying to get to people to imagine is, imagine, imagine a world where we completely, where we give because there's no other reason, where, a world where the, the fact that we can actually give to another human being that needs help. Um, what, what other reason do we need to help somebody than the fact that they need help? Why do we always have to get something in return? And, and yeah, it, it, you know, it, we're a million miles away from that world in some ways. Um, but it, in other ways, that world already exists. It, it, it happens on a, on a daily basis with family and friends. So can you imagine if you went home uh, on a normal Monday evening, and um, you cook dinner for your partner, and your partner goes to sit down, and, and you say, "Well, that's actually ten. You know, that's ten euros for dinner." Yeah, you would get a very, very curious look. Um, and so, so, the world of free economy already exists. Um, it's just all I'm asking people to do is actually expand, um, to expand the spirit of unconditional giving to humanity at large. And it's, it's, my message is a very, very simple one. It's not complicated. Um, it's, uh, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand it. It's about unconditional giving. It's about giving because you know, what other reason do we need to give other than somebody needs help? And, and that's probably at the core of, of, of my message. Um, because of time today, that's, that's a, a very, very small fraction of why I live money this. Um, I know most of you guys are a very, very sophisticated audience, and, um, but I, I know the one question you're probably asking is, how does that guy wipe his bum after he goes to the loo? And it's, how I live without money is quite a big question. Um, people ask me that every day, how, how do you live without money? Um, and given the, the time restraints, I've just got to touch on a few things. But for example, food. Um, I grow all my own food. Um, I, I forage some food from the wild. Um, I do a little bit of bartering, which is not my ideal, but I do a little bit of bartering for things like grains. Um, I live in an off-grid caravan, um, so I produce my own energy. Um, I cook outside every day. Um, I, I wash in a river. Um, I, I've got a wood burner made from an old gas bottle where I chop wood and, 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 and use the wood to heat my caravan. Um, I cycle sometimes maybe over 100 kilometers a week. Um, I prefer to walk because walking is much slower um, than even cycling. And, and as you can imagine, um, this list goes on and on and on into every kind of crevice of my life. To answer the question of how I wipe my bum, uh, I use uh, either leaves or I use newspaper. I once had the experience of actually, um, I, was, I, was, 
cutting off a piece of newspaper and um, I was about to give, give a wipe. And I looked down and it's a story about me. And, <laughs> and uh, it was... As you can imagine, in my ugly mugs on the, on the paper. And I thought, there's not many chances in life to have such utter disrespect for yourself. <laughs> so I was like... So yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, just, I kept wiping and it was great to wipe my, wipe my bum on my face. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, it, uh, when I normally do talks, it can take, you know, two hours of questions and answers to actually answer, you know, for, exa for example, I brush my teeth using a mixture of cuttlefish bone, which most people go, like, he, he like, he, he brushes his teeth with bone and, and wild fennel seed, and it, it's, it, it's interesting because when for, in, instead of, if you take every aspect of your life, um, You've got to replace what you normally have, what you, what you normally do with money, with a relationship either with the earth or with the people around you, and it's, it's those, it's those bonds. It's, there's an intimacy when when you have when you're dependent on people, when you're dependent on the earth. That intimacy and that, the bonds that are created from those relationships have got when when they're taken away, there's huge social implications of this, and they're they're grossly misunderstood. Well, um, I think. I've come here today, I haven't come here today to convince an entire room of people to live moneyless tomorrow, you know, um, I, you know I'm, a, I'm an idealist at heart, but I'm also a realist, and I know none of you guys are probably going to go and lunch and burn your wallet and all your credit cards and cash, it's, it's probably not going to happen. Having said that, I think if any of you did want to live moneyless, um, you, I, I'm, I'm pretty useless at almost everything I do. Um, if I can manage to live money less, trust me, you guys can do a much, much better job than me. But what I've come here to do today is show you that there's, there's many lens through which you can see the world. So the lens that we've had on for the longest time now is, is a lens called, how much can I get? And what I'm trying to say to people is that on the table in front of you, there are a number of lenses. If you take off this lens, how much can I get, and stick on a new lens called, how much can I give? Or think... <laughs> or think you wake up in the morning and you see another lens called how many people can I make smile today? And I woke up this morning and I... You're going to have to help me with this one. I woke up this morning and said I'm going to make 1,200 people smile at the one time. <laughs> if, If anybody isn't smiling, you're, 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 you're incredibly poor people. Well, <laughs> and so, yeah, so what I want to create is a world where there's no other reason... What, what are, as I said earlier, what other reason do we need to give than the fact that somebody needs help? Why do we need to get something in return? It's, a, it's an old mentality, and I'm trying to get people into a new mentality. And so the one thing I'd probably leave you with today would be this. Whether you completely, what you, if what, what you believe is in complete contradiction to what I believe, go and be the change you want to see in the world. You know, whether, whether you agree or disagree with me, whatever you believe in, whatever you're passionate about, go and be the change you want to see in the world. Have, have no discrepancy between here, between here, and between here. What the world needs now is action, not words. You know, uh, everything, I think, until the soldiers of peace become as brave as the soldiers of war, little is going to change. And every single person in this room, from you to you to you, is a soldier of peace. And I, I, would, I would beg you, please, 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 leave here today and go and be the change you want to see in the world. Go and have courage. Go and put exactly what you believe into action. You would not believe how, how easy it is that when you actually put what you believe into action, then it can happen. And that's what's going to change the world. It's not, going to, it's not going to change from us sitting in bars and talking about it. It's going to come from action. Apply your beliefs into action and you will change the world. You will change the people around you and you will change the world. So I beg you, please, please, please help us change this world. The world needs changing. And so I'll leave you. I just wish you all the courage and strength you're going to need to go out there and make this world a better place. Thank you very much.